eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. Man, I want to take this blessed opportunity to welcome all of our beloved viewers. And uh, before we start, I want us to look to God in prayer. Let's pray. Loving Father, in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We worship you this morning. We glorify you because of the gift of life and the joy of salvation. We are humble before you, Lord, as we usher your presence. A loving Father, you may grant us an opportunity to fellowship and to commune with you, O King of all the glory. I want to commit this session, Lord, and to your able hand, the loving Father, as we are going to fellowship you, manifest your power and authority in our midst, and may your hand of power and authority reign, King of all the glory. I welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit, and also I welcome the presence of King of all kings. May your word have a free course within us as we listen to you. May your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. We do pray and believe. Amen. Once more, I want to uh, welcome all our viewers for this uh, special day that the Lord has made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it, and also to glorify God for His goodness. I want us to look into the Word of God in the book of Luke chapter 7, uh, from verses 11 through 17. I want us to read and uh, fellowship from the Word of God from the book of Gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verses uh, 11 through 17. And I'll read, the Bible says, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her and when the Lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not and he came and touched the bear and they that bore him stood still and he said young man I said unto thee arise and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and delivered him to his mother and there came a fear on all and they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited his people and his rumor and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region roundabout. Amen. Uh, I want us to listen to the word of God and to hear from him from the portion of scripture that I've read under the title Jesus the Restorer. Jesus the Restorer. Uh, I've read from the book of Luke, Gospel according to Luke, as Jesus was carrying out his ministry through three and a half years when he was on the, uh, this world, we have read an encounter where Jesus went to a place called Nain. In Nain, there was a city. And this happened after he had healed a man who was sick in the house of the centurion and the spirit of the Lord led Jesus to a city of Nain. The Bible says that in that city there was a widow. In that city the widow had a son, the only son. And this is the center of my concern that the only hope that this woman had had been lost or taken from her. 
And this is what really touched my heart and really moved me so much that the only hope of hers has been taken away from her. And this happened after she had lost the husband. She lost the husband. And now her only hope was the son who was now to continue the generation and the lineage of this dead man and the widow. As the enemy is relentless, we are told that the enemy snatched this young son from the widow. And right on time, the Lord Jesus, the restorer, came. He appeared in the city. And I think it was divine plan, divine will of God for Jesus Christ to appear in this scene. The Bible says that the people were with her. The people of the city were really sympathizing. They were supportive. They were with the lady, the widow. But they could not restore back they did the, that which they could, but they could not restore back the son to the widow. But the restorer, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, appeared. He appeared in the scene. He was not invited, but through divine plan of God, he appeared. This precious moment, this morning, God, who had planned good things unto us, has enabled us to have a session with you in this wonderful morning that you may listen to the word of God. And I know through the preaching and the teaching of the word of God, the spirit of God is going to take us to another level. The spirit of God is going to impact our life. The spirit of God is going to illuminate our life and our hearts. The Spirit of God is going to take us to another encounter with God. No matter what you are going through, no matter what you are experiencing, no matter what is fighting your life, it is an opportunity to fellowship together and to listen to the Word of God. This message, Jesus the Restorer, is an appointment and encounter with your life and I ask the presence of God to grant us the spirit of understanding that you may understand what the Lord has prepared and has ordained for me and for you that this morning we may get to another spiritual elevation spiritual impartation spiritual nourishment spiritual edification that the Spirit of God may touch our life, that we may restore through this, through faith, that which was stolen from us, that which was snatched from us, may be restored. And out of it all, I have come up with a, a three-point sermon. And my first point will be, Jesus had compassion and consoled the widow. Jesus had compassion and consoled the widow. Verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. The Lord Jesus, the restorer, is always moved with our infirmities. He has feeling for us. He has an attention to them that turn to him, even to them that are, in, uh, that are in anguish and in pain, in agony, in challenges, in whatsoever situation that you are in. The Bible says, when Jesus arrived by the gate, he met with a team of people who are carrying the dead body at the gate. They were proceeding 
to the graveside. And we are told that Jesus did not even inquire. Jesus did not even uh, talk to know more about what is happening. Because it was something that was seen vividly clear that these people are carrying a dead body. They were mourners. But the mother of the, boy, of the son, the mother of the boy, was deep in sorrow. And she was weeping deeply. She was weeping profusely. And she, could, she was beyond control because of the loss. The only son, the only son, imagine, I pray that you may get into that understanding and, and, and in that scene whereby your only hope, your only son is being carried away. The enemy has done away with him. And now the team is leading to the graveside for the son to be buried. This might be very touchy. This might be very painful. This might be very weighty to this lady. And that's why Jesus had a compassion. Jesus was moved. Jesus got emotion in him. And Jesus looked unto her and consoled her by saying, Weep not. Hope has come. Weep not. The restorer has arrived. Weep not. The life giver, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, has arrived. This is what was very important. At this particular moment, maybe you are undergoing different challenges, difficulties, hard moments. Things are not working out. You have lost that which you value so much. You have lost that which you have really toiled for and worked for. You have lost your hope. You have lost your strength. You have lost the valuable thing that has been of uh, that, that has been a blessing unto your life. And this morning, the word of God has come that Jesus, who arrived on time, is here to speak to your life. Jesus is here to give you a turnaround and to the kind of situation you are going through. Jesus is the solution and to your problem. Jesus is the restorer of what you have lost. No matter what it is, no matter how far it has gone, no matter how long it has taken, no matter how you are alone, desperate, confused, and no one is able to bring it back to your life. This wonderful morning, I want to thank God for the great opportunity the Lord has given unto you that you may turn back to Him, that you may realize a uh, great compassion of the Lord. Our Lord is always moved when you turn to Him, when you call upon His name, when you look unto Him, when you offer your prayer, when you offer your supplication, when you offer your petition, the Lord is ready to turn and to get you out of that situation. No situation is beyond his power. No condition is beyond his authority. No level is beyond his reach. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Lord. He arrived at nine. He is able to arrive at your place. He is able, able to arrive at your situation. He is able to perform great miracles in your life. No matter what it takes. No matter how long it has taken, it is you to make a bold step of faith. To have an encounter with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus had a compassion. Jesus was moved. And he told the lady, weep not. May the Lord grant you strength that you may stand and look upon the cross of Jesus and have another rejuvenated strength that Jesus loves you that Jesus cares, that Jesus is gracious to his children and is gracious to his people. No matter how long, Jesus is here for you. Turn to him and look upon him. And Jesus is going to take you through. Even if you are going through a shadowed valley of death, 
Jesus is here for you. Even if you are sick in your child, Jesus Christ is a healer. He's here for you. Even if you have financial crisis in your life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is here to touch your life. You need to look unto him. You need not to lament. You need not to weep. You need not to complain. You need not to argue. It is very simple. Look to God through the word. Because the word of God has come for you. The word of God is here for you. The word of God is to elevate your heart and your spirit to another level in the mighty name of Jesus. Second point that we are learning out of this is that Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered death. Verse 14 and 15. It says, And he came and touched the bear, and they that bore him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus went straight to the pallbearers, them that are carrying the dead. They had no power over the situation. But Jesus, who has power over death, Jesus, who conquered death, when he died, he conquered death. And that's why death is nothing. The sting of death, Jesus is above the sting of death. The pain of death. Jesus has power over the pain of death. The close of death. Jesus has power over the close of death. And the Bible says that Jesus, after consoling the widow, the Bible says he went straight to the bearer. And he told them, stop. They stopped and stood. And the entire convoy had to stand still because of the command of Jesus. And the Bible says, he went straight and commanded the dead to rise up. Said, young men, I say unto you, Arise. That indicates the power that Jesus has over death. When you look at a dead person, it is quite practical that they don't hear. But Jesus commanded the dead, and the dead man sat down. Rose up. It might look an history, but it's quite practical with the Lord. It is impossible with mankind, but with God it is possible. The Bible says that He commanded the dead man to rise. He gave us the word, the word of God, and the word of God is His breath. The word of God is the sword. The word of God is the seed. The word of God is the light. The word of God is God himself. When we believe the word of God, we are rest assured that whatsoever we decree and declare shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, the dead man rose and sat down. And he spoke. After that, Jesus got hold of him and delivered him back to the mother. This wonderful moment, I want to charge your heart 
through the conviction of the Holy Ghost, the word to inspire your life, that even if your dream had died long time, time ago, your hope had died long time ago, your vision had died long time ago, your plans are out of hand, and there is nothing you can do about them. Through the word of God, that the Lord has ordained this wonderful time, the Lord has given you an opportunity that you may rise up and speak over that condition. You may rise up and turn around the situation and turn around all the laughing stock of your life and turn around and through the word your life is going to be revived again. Your life is going to be given life. Your life is going to blossom again. Your life is going to shine again. Because he who is going to inspire your life is none other than Jesus. What we need to do is to turn to him. What we need to do is to look unto him. Jesus has got power. Jesus is a conqueror. And the Bible says through him, we are more than conquerors. He conquered death. He had power over death. And he had power over the close of death. And that's why he raised this man. Jesus has got power to bring back that which was lost. Even if we are going through tough times, look to Jesus. Even if things are not working out, turn to Jesus. Even if your hope is gone, turn to Jesus. Even if people have deserted you, turn to Jesus. Even if it has been all away time that you have got nothing to bank on. You've been eating or consuming your whip, your tears. Today is a message of hope. This widow had lost hope. This widow had nothing to look to. But the Lord Jesus, the restorer, restored back his, I mean, her son. The Lord Jesus delivered the son back to her. Your hope may die in your hand, as this son died in the hand of the mother. The mother was caring. The mother was loving. The mother was quite optimistic. The mother was visionary. That even if my husband has died, I still have hope. Because I have my son. But the enemy saw the vision in her. The enemy saw the vision in the son. And that's why the enemy came for her. And the enemy snatched the son. May the Lord help you to understand. That even if things. Has taken another dimension. The Lord Jesus. If you call upon him is going to restore that which was taken from you, that which the enemy robbed from you, that which the enemy snatched from your hand. Anything that is beyond your power, we have the super extraordinary power of God, the Lord God Almighty. He knows and he cares for you. May the Lord inspire your life, that you may turn to him and call upon his name, that he may come, right on time that it may come right within your reach that your situation may change for his glory and for his honor jesus has power over sicknesses even if you are down you are sick you cannot overcome it this morning i speak over your life in the name of Jesus, the conqueror, may the life of God come upon you and may Jesus Christ revive your spirit and your life. May the spirit of God heal you that you may have hope again, that you may rise on your feet and walk in Jesus' mighty name. The last and the final point that there was a confession of the people, verse 16 through 8, uh, 17. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying, 
that a great prophet is risen up among us and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor, and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all region round about. The people who are with the widow who are escorting the mother and the dead body to the grave side realized something unique. And the people who confessed that in our midst a great prophet has risen. What the Lord is going to do, the people who knew your situation, the people who knew your condition, the people who knew your state shall really tremble and they'll confess. They'll declare the doings of the Lord and they'll say for sure, were it not the doing of God, for sure we could have lost this lady. We could have lost this guy. But God made them to confess. There was a great glory in that land and ju ju jubilation. People celebrated Jesus. People glorified God. People honored God. As you believe the word of God, this one of moment, people will testify of the goodness of the Lord. People will confess the power of God. People will confess the love of God. People will confess and testify the mighty miracles of God. May the Lord touch your life. May the Lord heal your life. May the Spirit of God revive your spirit and your life and your dream and your vision in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is in control. The Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond our imagination. The Lord used his sire, I mean, Elijah, to raise in the book of 1 Kings chapter 17. Elijah raised a widow's son, and this was like Christ in that time. The Lord Jesus has power. If you believe in, it's going to do miracle in your business. It's going to do miracle in your family. It's going to raise back your marriages, which has been derailed. God is going to revive your vision and your plans. It's going to restore back. Even if you lost your job, God is going to bring back your job. Even if things are not working out, look unto Jesus, the Son of God, to revive your life, that people may testify of the goodness of the Lord. I thank God. When Jesus went to Bethania, he raised Lazarus after four good days. When Lazarus was in the tomb, this is the man who has power over the dead, who has power over all conditions, who has power over all nature, who has power over all situations. He is the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe him, he is the restorer. This wonderful time, may the Lord touch your life. May the Lord revive your heart. May the Lord revive your spirit. May the Lord heal your body. May the Lord heal your marriage. May the Lord heal your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's believe as we pray in Jesus' name. Loving Father, King of all the glory, the mighty one of Israel, Lord, we thank you. I want to bless you, O King of all glory, for the blessed viewer who has made a step of faith. May King of Kings have a free course within their life. Touch them, heal them, deliver them, restore that was stolen from them, for you are the restorer. Revive their vision and their dream. Revive their life, O oh God. Restore, O oh God, back to them that was stolen by the enemy, that they may get back on their feet, and they may worship you, and to glorify your name. May your name be glorified, and may your name be honored. We thank you, and we worship you, King of all kings. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and believe. Amen. May the Lord bless you. I'm Pastor Alfred Otieno Odoyo. I minister under God's divine word ministry here in Nairobi. I have branches within Nairobi. I have a branch at Dandora under Pastor Nicholas Otieno. Dandora Faithful. I have our headquarters at Makongeni, Jogorod, under Pastor Lisho Mulo Majanga. And where I serve right now, I'm serving at a branch at Kibira. Jack uh, Garanja stage, that's where I serve right now, and I want to welcome each and every brother and sister who may be willing to contact me and uh, reach me through my contact 07-2339-6805, and my Airtel contact is 0101396805. If 
God grants you an opportunity and you get blessed, please don't shy, reach me and we may fellowship together and God may unite us in his lovely family that he may strive on to serve him to the fullest. May God bless you and may God keep you and may God bless the fraternity of Lolo TV and Beyond Deals as they serve the Most High King of all kings. Shalom. Let's meet next Thursday at such a time in Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you.